Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, who's away on vacation this week, all of our staff, and then all of the people who are helping to lead worship, we welcome you. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship this week. It's a wonderful time to join with us in worship. We're continuing in our worship commitment and celebration series called 10 Sovereignty Sabbath and Service where we've been focusing in on the Ten Commandments as they call us to greater worship greater simplicity greater generosity and greater joy we are joined today by uh, Reverend Keith Zimmerman who is our special guest preacher we'll learn more about him later and so it is just a wonderful day to be in worship. I want to encourage everyone to use the contact form. It's pinned right in the comment section, particularly if this is your first time to join with us in worship. Make sure you fill out that contact form. There's a place there for you to put all of your information so that we can connect with you, get to know you better, and get you connected into worship and small groups and service in all kinds of different ways. There's a place on that contact form for you to put your prayers that will go to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use your contact form for that as well. And uh, just let us connect with you uh, in this life of faith as we're growing and living and learning together. When we join together in online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. Our covenant to participation is that we're just going to participate fully in what we're doing. So go ahead and light a candle if that helps you focus. Turn off those other distractions, those other devices, so that you can really uh, concentrate in on what we're doing here together. And then participate. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When we're listening, listen. Just fully participate with all that you are. And then we covenant to be a blessing, that every Everything we say, the way that we participate in the comment section, the way we're present with the people in our household and with the community and world, that all of that is a blessing to everyone at all times. We also love when we get together for worship to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. And I encourage you to do that right now. You can say, peace be with you and respond back and also with you with anyone you might be with right now sharing in worship with people online do that in the comment section do it with me peace be with you and we're going to be led in this by of course some wonderful special folks who are part of our douglas avenue united methodist church family peace be with you good morning i'm keith schnapp been a member here at douglas seems forever love this place Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Malia Schmidt, and this is Micah Schmidt, and we are members at Douglas Ave United Methodist Church. Um, I'm also an associate at Wouldn't It Be Lovely, which is one of our ministries. Do you want to say hi, Micah? Hi. Peace be with you. And also with you. I'm Ruth Hose. I'm a member here at Douglas Avenue. I belong to Tuesday morning Bible study, Miriam Circle, and I help the church lady in the office. Peace be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Hi everyone, we're the Montgomery family. Um, we've been members of Douglas for uh, about four years now. Jake and I are on the welcoming and inclusion team. And I'm also the president of the UMW Esther Circle. Um, and this is Lincoln, and that's Jake, and I'm Eowyn. You wave. Say hi. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Hi, I'm Nancy Ross, and I'm a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And I'm here to do, share the call to worship with you. Please receive this call to worship. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Wherever you are along your life's journey, come and experience the abundance of God's love for you, providing your every need. Come so that our abundance meets the great needs of our world and the needs of our siblings throughout the world become part of our abundance. Let us worship God together now. Good morning. Please join us in singing Soul on Fire. Oh, I'm 
All right, all the kids who are here with us in worship, it's time for small talk. Get in really close to your devices, your screens, so you can see and hear everything. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her wonderful assistant, Laud the Lamb. So everybody, get ready for small talk. Yes. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud, who is destroying our our car set here, and his assistant Cohen. You want some help, Laud? Oh, good job there, buddy. Okay, so we're going to talk today about having God with us and in our heart, and sometimes what happens when we make bad some bad decisions. Okay, yeah. Do you ever make bad decisions, Laud? Oh, I know. Yeah, we all do. We all sometimes make bad decisions. Like he keeps knocking over this tree. Mm. No? Oh, the wind, the wind knocked over the tree. I'm so sorry. So we have our car here. And it's important in our life that we stay on the track. We stay on the right track. You've probably maybe heard your mom and dad say that. To stay on the right track. Okay, or the right path. So he's going here and he's going to make this turn. Things are going fine. No problems. He's on the track. And then he comes here. Oh, and he's got a decision to make. Now let's say that he doesn't really make the right decision this time. And let's say he doesn't have a very good relationship with God, right? So he's going to go over here and then, oh dear, completely off the track. And things just start going well, right? So let's put him back up here on the track. And he's got that really great relationship with God going on, but we're still human. We still make mistakes, right? What's important to know is when you come to this point and you maybe go off the track, you make a bad choice, a bad decision. When you have God in your heart, he's still got you. He still loves you. Even when we make bad decisions. So remember that and let's try, especially as we're getting closer to the holiday season, really God, and to keep God in your heart. And let's try to make the best choices we can. Laud really likes to play with the cars. So keep making those great decisions and remember to love God and love yourself. We miss you guys. Bye. Our first reading of the Bible is Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9, following the recounting of the Ten Commandments. Moses continues to teach the people of Israel with this greatest commandment. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible readings. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the ordinances that our Lord our God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy. Two, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord our God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently, so that it may go well with you, and so that you may multiply greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey, as the Lord, the God of our ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love our Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorsteps of your houses and on your gates. 
Hello, my name is Joy Brown and I am a youth group member and a lay member to annual conference. Our second reading of the Bible is Matthew chapter 22 verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. As we're considering our generous gifts into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in this season, uh, we have been having some wonderful testimonies as to why we love Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church and why we give. And our testimony this morning is brought to us by Alan Griffey. Hi, I'm Alan Griffey. I sing in the praise band here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also chair of Ad Council and co-chair of our Welcome and Inclusion team. I've been a member here at DAUMC for almost 18 years now. The one thing I love most about our church is its mission-oriented focus. We are always looking for new ways to reach out to the community and beyond to share the love of God with all. I could spend a great deal of time talking about all the things I love about DAUMC. But today, I want to talk to you about why I give to the church and what the spiritual discipline of tithing means to me. Through most of my life, I've been a regular giver to my church. Although I had heard about tithing, giving the first 10% of my income to God, all my life, it was really only the last 25 years or so that I started taking it seriously. At the time, I was not in great financial shape, living paycheck to paycheck, I wasn't really sure how I could give more to my church. So I started out slowly, building to 10% over the course of several years. Each year, increasing my giving became easier as I learned to trust God more. When I reached the full tithe, I felt I had really accomplished something. I slowly started to realize, however, that a tithe isn't the be-all and end-all of the spiritual discipline of giving. I have come to learn that, with God's help, I can live well below my means and give even more to my church. Each year, I prayerfully consider what God is leading me to give. For me, that is now well above a tithe, but I know God can help each of you determine the right amount for you. Thank you, and peace be with you. Hi, I'm Ellen Dixon and I go to Douglas Avenue Church and I'm part of the choir and let's sing the song, Thy Word is a Lamp. Yeah. 
It is my honor to welcome Reverend Keith Zimmerman as our guest preacher today. Reverend Zimmerman is a retired United Methodist elder, having served as district superintendent of the Vermilion River District. He is the co-chair of the Our Conference, Our Kids initiative of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference and a trustee of Garrett Evangelical Seminary in Evanston, Illinois. Keith is a devoted father, grandfather, and the husband of Reverend Jan Griffith. He is passionate about following Jesus in the ways of generosity and service. We are blessed to have him to bring a thoughtful and encouraging message to us entitled Living Ten as we prayerfully prepare to make our commitments of financial giving to the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Let's open our hearts to receive the message that Reverend Zimmerman brings us today. It's a privilege to be here today to have uh, received Pastor Meredith's invitation and to be a part of your stewardship journey, which is entitled 10. Over the past three weeks, you've been exploring the life that God wants us to live through sovereignty, Sabbath, and service, and considering the challenge of 10, moving to a tithe of 10%, using 10% less of oneself, and sharing 10% more time in service to others. Living 10 is a challenge, but it's one that we can undertake when we're resting securely on a foundation essential to our being and doing. We discover this foundation in the ancient Hebrew books of law, Deuteronomy, that's preserved in our Old Testament. Chapter 6, which we heard read earlier, and specifically in verse 5. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. The significance of this relationship that God desires to have with us is pretty hard to miss in this particular passage. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And the passage goes on to emphasize, keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an ensign on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. What a powerful message. Loving God. It is central to our faith and life. It's never to be forgotten as the writer of Deut Deuteronomy has shared. Not just were these words for those who were in that ancient generation, but they were for every generation and they were to continue to be shared on down the line as they moved to dwell in the promised land. It's no surprise that we find this central theme of loving God repeated again and again in the other Hebrew books of the law and the writings of the prophets, which are included in our Bible's Old Testament. And then it came dramatically to the forefront centuries later, when Jesus was challenged to name the greatest commandment. Jesus answered his questioner by referring to this pronouncement in Deuteronomy. His reciting of those words was so profound that the New Testament gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, included this encounter in their biographies of Jesus. Matthew as we heard when that passage was read earlier, they, Matthew recorded Jesus' statement almost word for word from Deuteronomy. And then he reported that Jesus added his own emphasis. This is the greatest and first commandment. Jesus was as serious about this particular commandment as Deuteronomy. No relationship is more crucial than loving God. But Jesus didn't stop there. Hearkening back to another 
book of law, Leviticus, preserved in the Bible's Old Testament, Jesus added, and a second is like it. You shall love the, your neighbor as yourself. Jesus was convinced about the importance of this commandment too, and he announced that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Commandments to be taken seriously by everyone who heard them in Jesus' generation and in every generation following in every place because a life of faith in the God who first loved us and in following the example and teachings of Jesus as we live among other people is all about relationships. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Commandments. Central to living 10 in the face of the pandemic and its continuing impact on our lives in dealing with the turmoil and contentiousness of this election season and in the uncertainty that lies ahead for us as individuals, as a nation, as a world. In the day in and day out relationships that we share in our families and workplaces, in our encounters with all the people with whom we may cross paths in spite of social distancing on any given day, and in our relationships to our money and resources and how we share them. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is a fascinating example of living 10 that we find in the Bible's New Testament in a letter written by the Apostle Paul, the great leader in the first century church, to a group of followers of Jesus in Corinth. There is no doubt that Paul understood Jesus' commandments. He was preaching and teaching them. He was sharing the good news about Jesus with everyone he encountered in Jerusalem and the surrounding areas, as well as into Greece and as far away as Rome. In the Bible's New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, the opening five verses, we learn the difference that this message made in the lives of the Macedonians. Here's what Paul wrote to them. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe, severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means and even beyond their means begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints. And this, not merely as we had expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. What an amazing example of generosity that's been offered by these Christians in Macedonia. Understand that the Macedonian congregation had probably been through tough times. Paul referred to them as having had a severe ordeal of affliction. He didn't say whether it was a health crisis or some other socio-political travail that was going on. We know that the economic situation may not have been very good there as well in that time of history because Paul wrote about their extreme poverty. And to the surprise of the Corinthians, and I'm sure to all of us, Paul noted in his letter that the Macedonians were doing this. They were begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in that ministry. Did you catch that? They were begging not to receive gifts, but to give them. In appreciation for the outpouring of God's goodness in their lives, even in the face of the affliction and the poverty they faced, they willingly praised God with their gifts. 
as they helped to support the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. They deemed it an honor to be able to be a part of the work of the church. On one hand, we may easily identify with the Macedonians because of COVID-19, maybe because of troubles or pain from other situations that we have gone through or may be experiencing right now as individuals or as families. We may also have a sense of how they felt uh, through experiences of conflict that we may have experienced, of difficult economic times, whether it's a pandemic or some other circumstance, or of political disagreements that have become personal among family and friends. 2020 is a year that we'll be happy to see it come to an end, quite likely, and certainly it'll be one that we will never forget. And so we may have a sense of what those Macedonians might have been going through. But on the other hand, it might be almost impossible for us to understand that those hard times did not cause them to be depressed or discouraged. It appears it's just the opposite. And neither were they bitter or stingy, not at all. They wanted to give all the more. In fact, Paul wrote about their abundant joy. For goodness sakes, we may wonder, what was wrong with these people? They had so little, and yet they were filled with abundant joy, and as Paul wrote, overflowed in a wealth of generosity. What those Macedonian Christians had learned through the teaching and preaching of the Apostle Paul and others was all about Jesus. Jesus, who had pointed to a God that loved all people, who was open and vulnerable to people's needs, compassionate in his listening and caring, in his touching and, and healing, willing to offer himself on behalf of people, not counting the cost, but giving everything, even his own life for the sake of others. The Macedonians heard that message and they took it to heart. Paul lifting up the Macedonian Christians unexpected sincere act explained how they gave themselves first to the Lord and then gave of what they had. The answer to handling all that life may bring to you and to me and in how we go about living 10 does not rest in whether or not uh, things are going well for us or in how little or how much we may possess. This is not a sociological issue. This is not an economic issue. It's certainly not a political issue. It's a spiritual issue. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And love your neighbors as yourself. With these as our foundation, you are able to take on the challenge of 10 in sovereignty and Sabbath and service. In your congregation's stewardship emphasis, and all of us together, are able to answer the call that we might be living 10 every day. May God be praised in everything that we do. Amen. Please join us as we sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Thank you. 
As we come into our time of prayer, I remind you that uh, we want to be in prayer with you, that you can offer up your prayers at any time. You can put them into the contact form so that your requests and celebrations go directly to our pastors and to our prayer team. You can connect with Pastor Margaret Ann and I at any time. Let us know, and we want to be in prayer with you. But please open now your hearts, your minds, your souls, and join with me in this time of prayer. Loving God, we are grateful to connect with one another in worship, even as we are in separate places and participate at different times. We are with you, united in Jesus Christ, and we come to you now to share all of the things of our hearts, our deepest hopes, our joyful celebrations. Thank you for your laws and directions that lead us in the paths of life and peace. As we continue to live into loving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves, as we continue to grow in our challenge of 10 spiritual practices, and as we prayerfully consider our giving to the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in these weeks, send your Holy Spirit to lead and guide each one of us to the generosity of life and giving that you have for each and every one. We bring to you all of who we are in these prayers, all of our concerns and worries, our prayers for others and ourselves, and celebrations of blessings too numerous to count. Receive the prayers that we share aloud, that we share in the comments, that we share in the silence of our hearts. We pray for all who are suffering with coronavirus and complications, for our community where infections continue to spread, and for all of our states, nations, and world, all experiencing an increase in infections and deaths. We pray for all healthcare workers, that their work may be your work of healing, that they may be safe and remain healthy as they bear the brunt of caring for so many who are ill and dying. We pray for all of our leaders in government to honestly seek and implement the best policies for community health and safety. Please continue to powerfully lead those seeking vaccines and treatments for COVID-19 to safe and effective medicines very soon. We pray for our country, loving God, that as we work through this season's elections, we may be a people who seek justice, peace, and the common good that we may move forward together. We know that we need not all believe alike, but that you call us to love alike. Envelop us in that commonwealth of love right now. We pray for all who seek your healing in body, mind, and relationship, that they receive healing, help, and hope. We thank you for the many blessings and celebrations, for love and joy shared, birthdays and anniversaries recognized, for the way we experience connections and help and love, even as we remain physically distanced. Loving God, this week, we give thanks for the selfless service of all of our veterans, past and present, and ask that you grant them your healing and peace. We ask for the healing of those who have been wounded in body and soul, wounds that are visible and invisible, sustained in war and military service, from Iraq and Afghanistan to Vietnam, Korea, World War II, and more. We pray for all currently serving in the military, at home or away from home, in non-combatant and combatant roles. Keep them safe and bring them home soon. We lift to you especially the veterans of our church family in thanksgiving for their work of service.
thank you for these veterans, loving God. Help us to honor those who have served by working for peace. Give us the vision to see a world in which all grow weary with war and fighting and turn their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. We share all of these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who taught us to pray. Please join with me in praying the Lord's Prayer aloud in whatever language our words are most comfortable for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Generosity is key to loving God with our full hearts and minds and soul and strength and loving our neighbor as ourselves. And I am so grateful for the way you have been generous in your financial giving to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We've been able to put all of those gifts into such great ministry here online, in person, in small groups, in service and support and powerful life transforming ministry in our community. Thank you. Thank you for continuing to give. You can give right into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church with our online giving portal. That link is pinned in the comment section. You can set up, set up automatic withdrawals with our financial institution by calling the church office. With your own financial institution, you can set those up. And you can mail checks right into the office at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. All of your giving makes a huge difference. We are in this season of reflecting on our giving for 2021 for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. You'll be receiving in the mail your commitment celebration package with a letter, with a guide to giving, with an estimate of giving card for 2021 and some other resources. Please use those very prayerfully this week and then join in all of the different ways that we're celebrating making those commitments this week. We have in-person opportunities. We have uh, opportunities for driving through the parking lot and celebrating just all kinds of things. So join with us, please, in offering those commitments and celebrating together. We have a mission moment today that is brought to us about Compass for Kids by our very own Molly Barrett. Let's pay close attention to Molly. Hi, everybody. It's Molly Barrett with Compass for Kids which if you don't know is a not-for-profit organization that supports low-income at-risk elementary age kids in Springfield Public Schools District 186. We are virtual this year due to COVID-19 and I'm here to inform you that we are looking for volunteers. We would love to have you join our team this year. We are looking for social and emotional leaders as well as helpers and we teach social emotional skills with a curriculum called edumotion that is online and movement based and this takes place on Tuesdays from 345 to 5 p.m. so that's one of the options to help on Tuesdays teaching or assisting with our social emotional classes as well as on Thursday evenings we have a book club and this takes place from 7 to 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. And we are looking for people to be book readers. So if you're with the younger kids, you would read an entire book. If you are reading to older kids, like second and third graders or fourth and fifth graders, you would be reading a couple chapters from a chapter book. We would love to have you get involved and it's easier than ever since it's virtual via Zoom. We added a page to our website so if you go to compassforkids.org slash volunteer, you will find all the information that you need and have a chance to sign up for an informational session, ask questions, look through information, um, or you can email Shelly Kinner, who is our Club Compass Program Manager, and her email address is shelly at compassforkids.org. And as always, you can reach out to me for more information as well. But I know that you, as members of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, love Compass for Kids, and we are grateful for your support. This is our 10th year, and if you haven't gotten involved yet, this would be a great year to do so. Thank you. 
Please stand and join with us as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. so much for joining with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today for online worship. It has been an honor and a pleasure to have this time with you today, and I pray that your experience has been powerful and meaningful and uplifting, and that you are able to further follow the Holy Spirit as it is working in your life and on your life as we are growing in our service to God and to our community. As you go into the rest of your day, Go knowing that God loves you entirely and completely as the precious child of God that you are. Go with Jesus Christ who calls you forward in that amazing service to love God completely with your heart and your mind and your soul and your neighbor as yourself. And go knowing that the Holy Spirit empowers you and gifts you for service and transformation in the world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.